working in agriculture has always been hard and backbreaking work, and even with a lot of technological advancements, it's still tough. For this reason, agriculture is yet another industry where automation is being discussed, but for now, it's being held back. Today, we'll look at the challenges facing agriculture workers and what role tech might play in improving their situation. First up, how robots could help. It's easy to imagine all the ways that machines and robots could be used to help out around farms. In the same way that tractors and plows simplified those tasks, newer devices can take even more of the burden of working in the fields. They can be especially useful for individuals or companies who own vast acres of farmland and need large teams to manage them. Currently, robots are being used to automate certain tasks that used to be performed by humans. These include harvesting, weeding, and planting seeds. But the use of technology has allowed some farms to take a more analytical approach to farming. With equipment being used to phenotype the crops that are being grown, as well as taking pH and mineral measurements of soil. Automation also helps with the remote management of farms. SCADA integration of farms is becoming more and more common. Using programmable logic controllers or remote terminal units, the farm can monitor various things around the farm and even trigger certain devices when their set point conditions are met. Combined with CCTV monitoring, an entire farm could be managed from a central control room and you'd only ever have to go to the farm for equipment maintenance. All this is great, but it requires network connectivity, and with farms in particular, that could be a problem. Now, let's discuss farming off the grid. Wiring up a local area network to connect all the equipment on site is definitely doable, even though running cables on a farm is probably hard to do. For a lot of applications, being able to rely on a wireless network would be fantastic, except internet connectivity has always been a problem in the countryside. In many countries, you can struggle to get full bars even in metropolitan areas, but the regions where farms are established have been a blind spot for internet service providers, or ISPs, for a long time. It was never really seen as being worth the trouble for these companies to build cell towers in rural areas, which was always unfair to the people who live there. Internet is a human right, but we're now at the point where it's actually holding a vital industry back. What the world needs are government initiatives to incentivize the telecom industry to roll out high-speed internet to rural areas. The other option could be to subsidize smaller companies to license the existing hardware and expand coverage. These would be heavy instruments in areas that are usually forgotten by the mainstream, but there are many reasons why governments need to make this a priority. So, here's why we need to value our farms. It goes without saying that a country's food production is virtually the lifeblood of that country. When the agriculture industry can't keep up with the demand, the country will have to import to make up the difference, which can be expensive. And of course, it's always nice to produce enough of a surplus to export abroad. But there are a few events that are rocking the world right now that highlight the importance of having a strong agricultural industry. First of these is the war in Ukraine. Among the many reasons that war is a tragedy, it has disrupted the export market of one of the world's largest producers of grain. Europe, in particular, is being hit by food supply issues, and the strain is being shifted to other grain exporters to take on the load that was being supplied by Ukraine. All of this has resulted in an increase in grain prices, but the countries that are able to at least produce enough for the people at home are best equipped to deal with this situation. Another one is the labor shortage in the agricultural industry. Farm jobs aren't very attractive, which is a completely different issue, but the result is that farmers are struggling to find workers to operate their farms. Automating these jobs would solve the problem now and forever, but they need the internet to be able to do that. We also agree that we shouldn't be trying to eliminate too many jobs from the farming sector, but that's kind of a different issue that goes beyond the scope of this video. And the final crisis that's coming in waves is, of course, climate change. We've already started seeing the effects of climate change on weather in different parts of the world, and those weather shifts have affected the agriculture industry. Industry. While you can't solve climate change with farming bots, the agricultural capacity that isn't affected by climate change will have to be squeezed for every bit of productivity they can give. With threats of droughts and famines in the coming decades, we should absolutely be shoring up our farms. When the potential risks are that high, is it so unreasonable to invest in providing broadband connections to farms and rural areas? So while you're busy liking and sharing this video, maybe slip a link into the DMs of your country's telecom authority. We think we've made a good case for why they need to take this issue seriously. Next, in other news, let's go inside the agricultural labor shortage. We mentioned the labor shortages in the agriculture industry before, and while we said that automation can solve this problem, it's worth looking into why these shortages have come up in the first place. You might be surprised by the underlying causes. There's an unsurprising
surprising aspect to this story. This is yet another side effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. However, what is surprising is that little of the agricultural workforce outside of Asia is actually homegrown. Countries like the US and UK rely heavily on seasonal workers to work on their farms during peak productivity times. But when the pandemic hit, air travel stopped and then sputtered back to life. But that deprived these countries of their overseas labor and it impacted their food production. Combine that with the war in Ukraine and the Western Hemisphere is really hurting right now. Measures that are being taken to address this include making immigration easier and reducing skill requirements, but this isn't a long-term solution. These countries should think about the automation angle, as well as incentivizing citizens and residents to take up these jobs themselves. And now, Indian agriculture in dire straits. With Ukraine embroiled in a war, a large part of the country was turning to India to make up some of the global grain supply shortfalls. India has one of the biggest agriculture industries in the world. Their economy has a strong agrarian foundation dating back millennia. Unfortunately, India will have to put the rest of the world on hold while it figures some things out. India has been experiencing some real hardship from its climate. Parts of the country were hit by insane heat waves earlier, and now they're facing a dry monsoon. This part of the year, which is supposed to be relatively wet in India, has been lacking in rain. Although India has a large agricultural sector, a great deal of it does depend on the rains from monsoons for its irrigation. In other words, the country may be at risk of a bad harvest. With the government concerned about whether they'll be able to export enough food to feed people at home, they're already de-escalating their exports. They're currently expecting to cut wheat exports by 5%, and this is just a proactive measure. It may be that the world will have to turn somewhere else for their produce, and India might just end up alongside them. And finally, a threat to our climate from agriculture. Earlier, we talked about how climate change can impact agriculture, but we should also acknowledge the impact that agriculture itself can have on our climate. Many of the practices we use in this field have been passed down over centuries, but some change may be in order. A team of researchers at Rice University highlighted the dangerous levels of nitrogen emission that stem from agriculture in the US. That nitrogen is released into the atmosphere in the form of nitrogen oxide and ammonia, and we don't need to tell you why you don't want that stuff in the atmosphere. Nitrogen oxide, in particular, has a much higher greenhouse gas effect than the usual villains of that story, methane and carbon dioxide. These emissions stem from the use of fertilizers, which contain nitrogen-based compounds. This is a bit of a dilemma because nitrogen is an important macronutrient that plants need to grow. It's like finding out that proteins are bad for the environment. In order to address this concern, fertilizer producing companies will have to figure out how to make fertilizer that doesn't release ammonia and other nitrogen-based gases into the atmosphere. The researchers do point out the silver lining in this discovery. If we look at air pollution statistics from a decade or so ago, this nitrogen pollution would hardly rank in comparison to many of the other pollutants that scientists were tearing their hair out over. The fact that scientists can now observe the impact of nitrogen pollution reflects the fact that those old pollutants have decreased significantly or have been eliminated entirely, which is good. That's it for the video today. How do you feel about automation in agriculture and other industries? Do you work in agriculture or know someone who does? Plant your comments in the comments section below and make sure to like, share, and subscribe.